y'all welcome back to my channel if you haven't been here before my name is Julie and I primarily make content surrounding mental health makeup as well as music today's video is a mental health related video as it's for my let's get clinical series where I read information about various mental health conditions out of the DSM if you haven't seen this little book before this this big book before it is the diagnostic and statistical manual of mental disorders we've been focusing specifically on eating disorders for the past few videos and we'll continue that until we get to treatment at the end so although I will get into treatment today I'm going to make a video that focuses on it in a little more detail just so these videos aren't too long today we're going to be talking about binge eating disorder the diagnostic criteria for binge eating disorder we have a recurrent episodes of binge eating an episode of binge eating is characterized by both of the following one eating in a discrete period of time, such as within any two hour period, an amount of food that's definitely larger than what most people would eat in a similar period of time under similar circumstances. So this is binge eating. This is not eating everything on your plate even though you were full. This is eating far more than the person needs to eat. Binge eating is different than overeating. So I want to differentiate that. Two, a sense of lack of control over eating during the episode, such as a feeling that you can't stop eating or control what or how much you are eating. And that's why this is a full-blown mental health condition because it's not something that someone can get some self-help tips for the most part and stop doing and requires treatment. On to criterion B. The binge eating episodes are associated with three or more of the following. So there's five here and you need three of the following to qualify for diagnosis. One, eating much more rapidly than normal. Two, eating until feeling uncomfortably full. Three, eating large amounts of food when not feeling physically hungry. Four, eating alone because of feeling embarrassed by how much one is eating. Five, feeling disgusted with oneself, depressed, or very guilty afterward. Binge eating disorder, although it is an eating disorder, has quite different symptoms than the previous eating disorders we got into, such as anorexia and bulimia. The overlap here in these symptoms is the feeling disgusted with oneself, depressed, or very guilty afterward, because as we got into in previous videos about eating disorders for anorexia and bulimia, a warning sign and a common comorbid association is that feeling of depression as well as feelings of guilt and shame. Moving on to criterion C, marks distress regarding binge eating if it's present. D, the binge eating occurs on average at least once a week for three months. So this needs to be going on at least once a week for three months in order to have a diagnosis officially documented. E, the binge eating is not associated with the recurrent use of inappropriate compensatory behavior as in bulimia nervosa and does not occur exclusively during the course of bulimia nervosa or anorexia nervosa. It's important they're mentioning that because there is overlap more specifically in bulimia nervosa since binging is a part of that mental health condition. But this mental health condition has separate symptoms and therefore has its own separate diagnosis. There's also a um, specifier for clinicians, for the therapist who is diagnosing you, just like in the previous eating disorders, that you must specify if the person is partially in remission, which refers to an average frequency of less than one episode per week for a sustained period of time in full remission, is that the individual does not exhibit any of these symptoms no longer. Therefore, they are classified as being in full remission. Severity levels need to be specified as well. Mild is one to three episodes. Moderate is four to seven. Severe, eight to 13. And extreme, 14 or more. I'm gonna quickly read you the last paragraph in this diagnostic features section because I think it sums up well what individuals with this mental health condition are enduring in a negative way. Individuals with binge eating disorder are typically ashamed of their eating problems and attempt to conceal their symptoms. Binge eating usually occurs in secrecy or as inconspicuously as possible. So this is not something that's attention seeking. Individuals who have this mental health condition are doing this privately and struggling to control it. The most common antecedent of binge eating is negative affect. Other triggers include interpersonal stressors, so relationships with other people, dietary restraint, negative feelings related to body weight, body shape, and food, as well as boredom. So that negative feelings related to body weight, body shape, and food is 
a very similar experience to individuals who have anorexia, bulimia, or other mental health issues we haven't gone into yet, such as orthorexia and eating disorders that are not specifically specified. It's important to mention that binge eating disorder occurs in individuals at a normal weight or who are overweight or obese. So there is not a weight requirement per se for this diagnosis. It tends to be more common in individuals who are overweight and obese. The DSM also notes that just because someone is obese, it doesn't mean they're struggling with this disorder. There is a big difference between overeating and having these intensive episodes of binge eating. NETA or the National Eating Disorder Association, I like on their website that not only do they go over these DSM symptoms, specifically they also go over warning signs of binge eating disorder so i'm going to go over some of those now so food may disappear in short periods of time there may be lots of empty wrappers and containers which indicate consumption of large amounts of food the individual may appear uncomfortable eating around others any new practice with food or fad diets such as cutting out entire food groups similar to other mental health struggles within eating disorders fear of eating in public or socially stealing or hoarding food creating lifestyle schedules or rituals that perpetuate the behavior, withdrawing socially, frequent dieting, extreme concern with body weight and shape, frequent checking in the mirror for perceived flaws in appearance, secret episodes of binge eating, disruption in normal eating behaviors, including eating throughout the day with no planned meal time, skipping meals, or taking small portions of food at regular meals. They may also engage in sporadic fasting or repetitive dieting. They could deal with food rituals. They may eat alone out of embarrassment at the quantity of the food they are eating, and they may feel disgusted, depressed, or guilty after a binge eating episode. Their weight may fluctuate, and they also may experience low self-esteem. They physically may endure stomach cramps or other gastrointestinal complaints such as constipation and acid reflux and they may have difficulties concentrating since they are not getting the nutritional benefits that they need from food. Now let's get into prevalence. According to the DSM-5 which was published in 2013, we have a 12-month prevalence of binge eating disorder among U.S. adults ages 18 or older. Females were at 1.6 percent whereas males were at 0.8 percent. The gender ratio in binge eating disorder is less skewed than in bulimia nervosa. It is as prevalent among females from racial or ethnic minority groups as it's been reported for white females. The disorder is also more prevalent among individuals who are looking for weight loss treatment than in the general population. According to ANAD, which has much information on their website about anorexia nervosa as well as other eating disorders. Prevalence is at 2.8% of American adults suffering from binge eating disorder in their lifetime. Half of the risk for this disorder is genetic. Half of these patients have a comorbid mood disorder. More than half have comorbid anxiety disorders. Nearly one in 10 of these patients have a comorbid substance abuse disorder, typically alcohol use and binge eating or loss of control with eating may be as high as 25% in post-bariatric patients, so patients who got weight loss surgery. I also want to mention that binge eating disorder is very commonly triggered by childhood trauma, especially specifically childhood sexual abuse. Finally, getting into treatment options that are evidence-based specifically for binge eating disorder, the National Eating Disorders Collaboration, which is an initiative of the Australian Government Department of Health talks about some evidence-based treatments for binge eating disorder. CBT appears to be an evidence-based treatment for binge eating disorder. However, there is a specific type of CBT delineated as CBTE, which is specific to treating the thought patterns, intensive emotions, as well as compensatory behaviors or maladaptive coping behaviors within eating disorders. This treatment has not been researched heavily enough to be officially an evidence-based treatment for binge eating disorder. However, it seems to hold some efficacy. Beyond that, DBT or dialectical behavioral therapy has also been found to be helpful for eating disorders, specifically 
binge eating disorder in that it addresses mindfulness, emotion regulation, as well as distress tolerance. Interpersonal effectiveness is a really important part of DBT for eating disorders since individuals with these disorders tend to have interpersonal conflicts and also socially withdraw or isolate. The website also cites IPT, which stands for interpersonal therapy and is exactly what it sounds like. It is a method of treating mental health conditions in which individuals have difficulty with interpersonal relationships so that this can be addressed in counseling. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a like if you enjoyed it. I'd love for you to subscribe to my channel as well. Please follow me on my social medias if you would like. My Instagram is Julie underscore counseling. My Twitter is Julie counseling with no underscore and my Facebook page will be linked down below as well. And I'll catch you on the flip side. Bye guys.